Hey guys, Mel here talking about the three tips for making next season better. AKA things we can control based on the things that we feel like we can't control. So the top three tips, let me write them off. A, or first one, hey, there's Alicia, let's add her in, is get the parents on your side. And one of the things that was kind of, uh, hey, let's be honest, was it's not all their fault. I know <laughs> we as coaches tend to be like, ugh, the parents. I heard it again the other day. The, the best parent or the best team I could have would be a team with a bunch of orphans. <laughs> Funny. And we all get it. But it's sad too, right? So we want to get a little bit past that and evolve. Uh, second one is to get the girls to push themselves. Uh, we hear a lot about how do I motivate my players? How do I get them to work harder, to care more? We hear all the time, I feel like I care more about this game than my players do, uh, which is sad, right? And honestly, I, I can't believe that's true. <laughs> I don't. We just got to figure out how to get them to pull it out of themselves, right? Uh, and then the last one is to take care of yourself first. Uh, Coaches are guilty of this. Teachers, parents, uh, we do this all the time where we're so focused on helping our athletes, helping our children that we forget about ourselves. And then the ironic thing is the more we put into them, if we are leaving ourselves out of the equation, not taking care of our health, not taking care of ourselves mentally, emotionally, then we're unable to give them what they really need, which is a parent who is present and who uh, is able to focus on their needs, a coach who is in the moment, who is showing up as their mentally toughest self so that we can be a model for them on the field, right? So I tried to bring Alicia on camera. It does not want to bring you on, Alicia. It says adding and it doesn't want to do that. So maybe we can make this work. Otherwise, she's going to be in the comments and I will read out what she's saying because um, she has awesome perspective on this, uh, especially being a veteran. The guest declined. <laughs> I doubt she actually declined. So technical difficulties. She'll be in the comments. Um, but let's start with the getting the parents on your side. So instead of, <laughs> hey, Joni, um, are you guys like in the same vicinity right now watching this that could be fun um alicia is up in canada right now working at the beyond the white lions camp so if anybody is interested in anything amazing camp wise look that up Joni frey um so first things first with getting the parents on your side stop demonizing them <laughs> yes it gets annoying yes it's really hurtful some things that parents say about us i had an experience where I had coached a kid for two years. I was in my third year at the program. So you would think people know me by now and trust me a little bit more. Um, and I had a parent come up to the dugout. This is college, mind you. Come up to the dugout during the game, talking to their athlete about what was going on and what, why she wasn't playing. I look over at her and I look over at the parent and I'm like, hey, uh, you, you know the rules. Like, get get up from the dugout, what you doing? I said it jokingly thinking like it was fine. And I got the look, I was like, oh no, like he's serious. And then I turned to the player and said like, are you okay? She starts crying. Like, oh my gosh, this is, this is a player I love and care about. And I know she's upset she's not playing right now, but like, I can't deal with that in the middle of a game. And I felt so bad for her. <laughs> and same thing, we had to talk after the game and it, it had nothing to do with the parent hating me. It had nothing to do with me not putting that player first, but it was a misunderstanding, miscommunication, or just honestly a parent trying to protect their kid, right? And looking out for them. Alicia says, like parents on your side means getting them involved in the program and making them feel like a part of your program, giving them responsibilities to help you as a coach. So learn that lesson, right? And it's the same every level. I know it's a little more separate in college because um, there's this wall of like, I'm the college coach, you've sent your kids off to me, but like you don't shut off being a parent and wanting to help, right? So doing things like, hey, 
can you help with between game snacks? It's simple. It seems like, oh, maybe they might think it's a pain in the butt, but what parent doesn't want to like feel like they're a part of the team and helping out? So instead of saying like, you just stay away, don't talk to me. Yes, there are going to things that we don't going to be things that we don't want to talk to them about. Like, I'm not going to discuss every uh, coaching decision with every parent. But there are other things like, hey, can you help with this uh, fundraising event? Can you help with getting the parents rallied together and communicating with them? I had parents who were really good at being my relay. So I could just tell one parent, hey, this is what we're doing this weekend, or here's, here's how plans have changed due to weather yet again. Can you please forward on this information to all the parents? So bringing them into the fold that way, they get to see a little bit of your culture. They see what you're about as a coach too, and they see that you care and you're trying to do all these things for their kids, right? Uh, the next one um, is defining parent expectations up front. So I have a caveat to that. So yes, you need to define expectations of your parents, what you want them to do for the girls, what you want them to do during the games, uh, what you don't want them doing in either of those situations, like the car ride home or between games, if you play double headers or multiple games in a day. Um, you have to define those up front. But what's more important is knowing that it is not a quick fix. You cannot just lay out the contract, read it to them once at your beginning of the year meeting, have them sign it and expect that like, perfect, I've got them, I've got them right where I want them, they've signed it, now I can get them if they misbehave. Because they will misbehave, right? And they, a lot of them have been doing it all these years, a lot of them don't see the harm in what they're doing at all. And they're gonna keep looking out for their kids, right? So the more important thing, and this goes into all three of these points is you need to make it a part of your culture. Like this is the way Alicia runs her program. She has expectations of her players and of her parents. They are very clear and she will <laughs> call you out when you're not meeting them. However, she will also support you in trying to make better decisions, whether it's the girls or the parents, right? So know that, it's all about continuing that culture, building it daily uh, and making adjustments either way. Like I, the first one was don't demonize the parents, but also don't victimize yourself. Like it, it's not about you as a coach. It, I had a coach ask me like, maybe it's because I'm a young female coach. Like, no, I have also talked to older experienced male coaches who have gone through the same thing. It is, not about you personally, even though sometimes it evolves into making personal comments that hurt. I've seen that too. But really, it's just our own insecurity telling us that like, oh, well, like, maybe they're doubting me as a coach or well, then I need to I need to make sure they know that like, I do care about their kids. It's you can't victimize yourself either. So in all this, you need to make sure that you can reflect on the situation whenever something goes awry and then also deal with feedback both directions so helping the parent reflect <laughs> yes culture takes time be patient that should just be the coach's mantra be patient because it's really difficult <laughs> most of us coaches like we want to help so much we want to affect change we want to impact people right now we have a really hard time waiting for that impact to happen especially when it's other adults right um so reflecting on what you were doing that could have been misperceived or you could have handled differently reflect on hey what was their perspective um accept feedback of well this is why i made that comment or i asked you about playing time is because i was seeing you do this hey you know what sometimes i've made the wrong mistake on playing time what there are gonna be times when yeah i do favor a kid over another and though there's usually a reason for that it does not mean there's not a way to 
get their player in more or give them more opportunities, that kind of thing. So taking that feedback and then also being able to reflect and give feedback to the parents in a way that is about the growth of the team. And as always, back to building up these individual players, building these young women so that they can be a part of this amazing team and take the lessons with them, right? So going over those again, no demonizing the parents, no victimizing yourself, and know that there's no quick fixes. <laughs> those are the three for how to get parents on your side. Um, and again, it takes time throughout the whole season. This is not a, a checklist that you can take into tryouts coming up and be like, I'm going to have perfect parents. Look what I got from Mental Sweet Spot. Because <laughs> that's what the basis of Mental Sweet Spot is, is it's a balance. There is a sweet spot in everything we do from confidence to focus to communication. Communication is key and players and parents want to be communicated with. So do you, right? There's nothing worse than hearing after the season, all this stuff come up and you're like, what? I didn't know you thought that. And I've, I heard it again recently, a coach was talking about how like, I thought that parent was completely happy. And now I'm wondering, are they just two faced or are people afraid to like, tell me what they need? All comes down to finding a way to communicate and get that stuff out on the table, honestly, and time in a timely manner. <laughs> like I hate hearing afterward something that I could have changed, right? All right, next thing. <laughs> Get the girls to push themselves. Sounds wonderful, right? Almost like a unicorn <laughs> um, of how to, instead of motivating players or lighting a fire under them, because we know, I know we all want to believe that we're really motivational. <laughs> I've had this conversation with Leisha before too, with the quotes she picks before games. Like we want to believe that we have this beautiful message that will just fire them up and get them ready to play and perform but it doesn't always work for every player it doesn't always work every time it doesn't always work in that moment sometimes it works later so it's less about motivating them now and more about <laughs> oh she's like i like to believe that too right <laughs> we all do like oh, i got this perfect speech planned out and it's gonna be amazing and i had like the right energy <laughs> and then some girl was distracted and spacing out and didn't hear a message. But the point is, the more consistent you are with those types of messages, then it helps them choose the message and when to hear it so they can take it on themselves. So here are three things that do not work. Do not set their goals for them. Beginning of season is exciting. We have the goals we want. As a coach for our team, we have the ideas and our expectations of what we expect and blah, blah, blah. But if you set their goals for them, hey, we're going to win this many games. We're going to go this far in postseason. Um, individually, you're going to do this, this, this. Stats-wise, here's what you're going to do. When you hand someone their goals, even if they agree with them, it takes away that feeling of this is something that I want. The next thing is do not use incentives. Oh, if we do this, you get ice cream. <laughs> it's fun as a fun activity. Like, hey guys, we uh, run roll this team today that we're supposed to run roll. I'll buy ice cream, that's fun. But if everything revolves around incentives, like, hey, uh, if you bat this average, you get an award. If you pitch a shutout, then you get this. It's less about giving prizes for each thing and more about celebrating each thing. So it might be a game. Being positive and being consistent with that over time helps players know you believe in them and can allow you to help push them to get better. Oh, so good. So it's about the little hits of positivity, of reminding them of the good things they're doing, of reminding them when they overcame something that was difficult or when they bounced back or when they just pushed through a tough time or a tough day, all those little things, that's what gets them to realize like, oh, well, if coach can keep saying all these things, she believes in me, he believes in me. Okay, 
now I can push myself to do even more because I'm not worried that, go, oh, am I not a good player? Am I not going to ever succeed? The things that go through their heads are really dramatic and real to them, right? Like I had some crazy thoughts in my head. I still do this to myself where I get all, it's, it's like a drama point of view or like, I just should quit this this job I should just go get a a nine-to-five job I I, I, I'm not meant to be a coach (laughs) all these things have gone through my head too so imagine what's going through their head as teenagers as young adults going through all the other stuff too so it's all about hitting them with the positivity positivity and the motivation in little spurts all the time so that you can free them to motivate themselves um And then the third thing is don't use blanket tactics. Uh, Like if you only come to practice with a quote or you read a passage from something every day and you never once talk to the individual players about it, it's hit or miss whether or not it's going to work. Maybe one thing will work for one player, not another. But if you're doing that kind of stuff and then like checking in with the one player you saw, it was kind of pulling back or like, hey, I noticed you could have come for extra the day, but you kind of skipped out. What's going on? Like, are you are you really busy? Do you need help? Um, like with stuff outside of school? Do you need more time at a different point in the day? Or were you just exhausted? <laughs> What's going on? So finding ways to push themselves comes once they see that you are allowing them to do it. If you're constantly on them, you got to give more, you got to do this, you have to do that without anything on the back end, any of that balance that we're talking about of like, hey, I know you hear me. And yeah, one on one conversations during practice are like gold, not, oh, I'll talk to them later, like take two minutes to pull them aside after a drill in between drills, um, during when it's not their turn, and say, hey, what's going on? And that little bit of just pulling their attention to it really can get them to snap out of it and be like, oh, you're right. Okay, I can do this. As opposed to just yelling and barking it at them as a whole, right? Um, Alicia, I want you to comment on this one. What do you say to the girls that you know should be giving a lot more? Specifically like effort, like like they're not even trying. I don't know what her deal is. Uh, like she should be so much better than this if she just put in more work. What is an example, quick conversation you'd have with a girl like that in the middle of practice? We'll give her some time to type that up too because now she's got to type it all. But that's something we hear all the time is, oh, this player's really good. If only she tried harder, or she worked a little bit more, or it just seems like my player that doesn't care usually it's something else going on that's getting in their way. If they really didn't care, if they were really checked out, um, they wouldn't be there. Uh, so first have a convo about life outside of softball. Huge. That like, That's the perfect opportunity. Just make sure everything's okay. Because oftentimes it's something going on outside the lines that is distracting her or weighing on her. I love that. Um, and then it shows that you care about them first as a person. Yeah, we talk about that a lot. Um, I want my girls to know I care about them. I want to impact them off the field. This is the how, <laughs> the having those conversations. I have a girl that doesn't talk. Yes. Oh my gosh. I've heard that so many times. Like this kid will not communicate during practice <laughs> or I can't get anything out of her. Alicia, what would you say with that girl who's very shy and is not open to discussing these things then ask what's stopping them from diving or sprinting yes exactly if you're like at all (laughs) yeah so andre's got maybe a very shy player maybe someone who's very socially uncomfortable you never know um but it's players like that that you just have to find another way in so alicia i know you have players like that too where there's some that you have conversations with easily. Like they grow up, they're going to be one of your friends when they graduate. Right. And then there's others that it's hard to get through to, or some that just will not open up. 
uh, what do you do with players like that? And again, it's like, that's one example or a player who's being stubborn about it and like, what? yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> or who just doesn't realize what's going on. The point again is to make sure you're not using a blanket tactic. Not every player is going to easily talk to you on the sidelines in between plays. Not every player is going to be able to articulate what's going on or feel comfortable telling you that something personal is going on. In that case, you got to find some other tactics. And again, the way to do that is to make sure that's a part of the culture. Every day you're trying to talk to kids during practice, not just when something goes wrong or something seems off. Um, every day you're, you're balancing that balancing act of like, okay, I need to push them more today and like see what they're made of. And then, okay, I need to pull back on the, the outward pushing and like pull some <laughs> towards me by having those conversations. So again, it's that balancing act and making sure that you're reflecting on it. You're getting feedback from your assistants, uh, from the girls maybe some of the ones who are very comfortable talking with you. And again, just creating that culture day by day. Uh, the third and final topic is really important, especially this time of year, we hear this a lot and it breaks my heart when I hear coaches are burnout and frustrated and over it and end up quitting. Um, talk to another coach, great coach. I guess coach themselves is like, I'm a damn good coach and I'm choosing to step away because of all the, the BS in the background, really. Um, and sometimes that it's not fixable. Sometimes it, it is the best choice to back off, to, to quit. Um, but you just need to know that you need to take care of yourself first if you really do want to make an impact as a coach. So three don'ts. The first one, do not grind. We, uh, as, a co as a coaching culture, we like to grind and do it all and do all the things. We wear all the hats and we work on top of our nine to fives and we do extra work afterward. And our phone is always on and we are always on call for our players, right? That's the grind. <laughs> and though it is, I hear this a lot that uh, coaching is uh, a lifestyle not just a profession or a job, right? But at the same time, I don't think it needs to take over our lives. I think it should be, it's a part of who we are and it's a part of what we do daily and we like putting that extra time. But as soon as it becomes a grind or it starts taking away from family time or starts taking away from your personal time, whatever that may be for you, even if it's just binge watching Netflix. <laughs> if you don't have time to take care of you, it's not gonna work out. And so the next one, I'll get some pushback on this, I'm sure, is I don't, I just figured this out. I don't believe in we over me anymore. I am a team player. I love teams. I thrive in teams. So finding Alicia for my business when it was just me starting out, amazing. Now joining forces with Jen and Stacy and adding TJ, like, ah, oh, this is my jam. I believe in teams, but I don't believe in we over me because that says like I'm below, right? The team comes first. Anything that I need comes second. I believe it's me for we. So if I take care of myself, not in a selfish way, but making sure that I can show up, making sure that I'm giving all that I can to my team, to my teammates, to my colleagues, BPs, business partners, um, call you the BP, it's easier. Um, if I am showing up as my best self, that's really what's going to take care of my team. And how can you, yeah, always take care of yourself first. How can you show up as your best you if you're not taking care of yourself? That's everything from sleep to just having some brain space to knowing what you need, knowing when to shut off, knowing when to step back for a little bit. Uh, someone in here today, one of the coaches said, I believe it, who was it? can't remember at this point. Oh, it was Valerie. Uh, said she's giving her team and herself six weeks off 
like even just time off is huge and like especially travel ball world there's no time no time off that's a lie all coaching there's no time off <laughs> i never took time coaching off in college alicia doesn't really take a break either even though her season is technically shorter um finding time to exercise if that's good for you like there's so many ways that we each take care of ourselves or even if it's just the way you eat that kind of thing and we're going to talk about that more in a second because it's all spawned from this amazing program we've put together we've been like working with you coaches doing the podcast for a while now and oh, we've got really clear with the team that we were telling you about of how we can serve coaches to really lift you up because you're our people you are who we want to help so that you can impact the lives of the girls that you work with right but if you don't take care of yourself if you try to take it all on yourself and try to do all the things all the time you're not going to make the impact you want hands down sorry you will you will have impact and you will have some players who are really connected with you and you make a difference in their life you will always make a difference but the real impact that you know you're capable of because you're here you are watching this right now you're putting an extra time on a facebook live on a friday evening like this is this is next level leadership right here like we talk about a big game about like ah oh, i'm a lifelong learner but do you put it into action in a way that allows you to show up as your best self are you doing that? Because that's, that's the real impact. That's the real leader. That's the leader who puts these things into action, doesn't, not just talking about them, right? We've all had people who talk a great game and then put them in action or you look at their actions, you're like, uh, do I really want to follow that person? So this is what it takes to be that true leader. So let's recap all of them. So get the parents on your side by not demonizing them, not victimizing yourself, and knowing that no quick fixes. Um, get the girls to push themselves by not setting goals for them. Don't use incentives and don't use blanket tactics. And then take care of yourself first by not grinding, not putting we over me. Show up, fill me before so I can serve the we. And then don't do it all by yourself. And then the main theme that keeps coming up in all these things that we talk about every topic we think of discussing on the podcast every guest we have come on it all comes down to creating the culture maintaining a balance of all things mental and emotional and physical right balancing the rest with the work balancing the the peace with the push right <laughs> the fire with the trust so everything's a balance and then the third thing is do not go it alone there are so many of us coaches out here who are willing to support each other and that's what we put together with our new program called fit to lead i will spare you the details um but i will tell you what that takes an eye <laughs> An investment in you <laughs> there we go dang typing <laughs> alicia would say fat thumbs right now um that's the thing like if you are one of these leaders these next level leaders that we're talking about we have this program you have to apply for it um and then we're only in, in inviting in a few people um we're starting the session pretty soon in a couple of weeks but we want leaders who want to make that big time impact and are willing to go to bat for themselves by surrounding themselves with the people who can help them get there. All these things you have to be able to reflect. You have to be able to get and receive feedback. And you can't do that by yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry, as much as I, I, I'm an introvert, I like to think overthinker as well. And I don't get nearly as far as in one conversation with my, my team here. <laughs> like, anything personal development anything being able to serve others any business ideas it is all accelerated when you surround yourself with a power team and that's what fit to lead is we start with getting yourself 
fit in mind, body, spirit with TJ's are like our master of fitness, wellness, uh, confidence. So making sure that we're showing up as our best, that's how the program starts. And then it, it evolves into, all right, now, how do I take that awesome new self I've just built up and I'm like my best self right now. Now I want to go do something with it, right? Then we put that into action with your teams, with your players, with your children, with your family and friends. So if any of you who are watching this now would like more information on the Fit to Lead program, we are starting in a couple weeks and we are only accepting a few people. So please reach out to us via messenger um, and let us know. And we will let you know more about the program and see if you could be a good fit for that because we have found that when we bring in amazing leaders like yourselves, we all grow exponentially. So we cannot wait to meet even more people to bring into the fold, into our team, onto our team, into our little family. Um, and then you can really make next season, every season, better, faster. Because that's what happens with the team. So thank you guys for joining us. Please feel free. I'll stay on here a little bit longer if you'd like. Ask any questions you have about the things we talked about or about their program. I'll try to answer them as best as possible. Um, otherwise, yeah, let's get in Messenger. Reach out because I added a bonus, uh, a bonus tip. If you really want to be a great coach and we talk about being uh, people who want to develop on and off the field and want to make an impact in people's lives, you got to show up. So show up, get the information. And if the program's for you, come join us. All right, guys, thank you for joining us and uh, we will see you soon. Have a good one.